welcome if you just joined us to the recording we just started this a few minutes ago we've just been chatting about lip syncing and uh doing things like cutaway shots where you film extra action and um and yeah so uh any more questions is it jonathan does that does that kind of uh yeah it does i just find with... that with with, with close-ups it's 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 different to far away because with a close up you can see what my mouth's doing and if you, I'm stood the other side of the room it's just you, you, you can know. and that that's where that's why it's good to have a close up shot and a far away shot and in the close up shots where you think oh I'm dealt that bit you can cut to those and the, the bits where I think oh that's a bit dodge you can cut to the far away shot so it doesn't always have to be one or the other yeah yeah Fair enough yeah and when you are lip syncing. I, I, are you properly singing it? Uh, yeah, I am. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you are, because because some people don't. And I say to them, you don't need to you don't need to be quiet. You can you can sing it out. You know. Um, Kate, Kate, uh, when we did um, Moon, Moonlight Shadow for Lucy, Kate Kate did the whole. Yeah, and and it does, and it really looks like you're doing that. <laughs> you always end up looking like <laughs> slightly wrong. It's never quite right. Yeah. Um, hey, sir. Yeah. Sure. I've got a few. I've got a few questions. Go for it, Simon. About the about recording audio, mm -hmm. uh, I've had a bit of difficulty. Um, firstly, the best way to record, well, to get rid of get, getting rid of echo, right? Um, and then I bought a I bought quite a cheap mic, but what I found was when I sang at my loudest, it sort of it went distorted at the yeah. You can and fix that. I didn't. I didn't know how to fix that. Okay. What, what, is there, are you on a Mac or PC? You can fix it for both. But I'm on. I'm on a PC, so okay. I don't know whether I should have particular software that I record from it, the mic directly it's, into. It, or... It's a USB mic, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me what just. Do... What's my? Um, it's a. It, it's just a random one off. Off Amazon. Uh, Let's have a look. Looks like this. It's got okay. Uh, yeah, that should be um, fine. Yeah, that's not too dissimilar to how mine looks. Does it have a Does it have a gain button? A uh, gain knob on it? It doesn't have it. It has a volume yeah. and an echo. Yeah. So echo wants to be all the way down, but on 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 the USB mics, the gains usually set in your system preferences. Okay, so if I let me just share screen. Okay, and I'll just go to desktop. Uh, there we go. So if I just open up my system preferences here, and it's the same on a PC, you go into control panel. So you, you find the control panel for sound. And, and what you've got with USB mics is so here's my sound. Okay, and here's my input, you can see I've got input levels. All right, and I've got mine about three quarters there. And, and and my voice is going you see i've got a little recording meter there it's going up to about if i was like when i was singing things like bat out of hell i took that down to about there because i was singing a lot louder than i'm talking than i'm talking I was like, bat out of hell! all that good stuff you can see now you see if i take this right up like this all oh, right you can see look at that that level is going all the way to the top that's gonna that's gonna distort okay really? You can really hear that. If I take that down, okay, that's going to be better. So what you want to do, uh, uh, what some sometimes people do when they check check the mics, is they'll do they'll go one two one two one two. That's fine. But in fact, when they start singing, they're like, "Hear my song from my gun." You know, they're, they're suddenly singing a lot louder. So check at the loudest bit that you're going to be singing. If that's going, so if that hits the top, if that hits the top levels and if you've got a recording program you'll see it even better because you'll see um like it in here you see my levels there see those on the right. okay on the, on the right, right on the right hand side so i'll just go back to my uh, system preferences here okay take that up whoa you see that yeah take that down okay what i want is kind of when i'm at my loudest to be i'll just stop recording that to be hitting um to be hitting that yellow spot no, but never going into the red because that red 
is when you're peeking. That's like danger, Will Robinson. You're too loud. Okay, so it doesn't matter how good or expensive your microphone is. If you've got it set too loud, it's going to distort. And that's that's the problem a lot of people do. They, they've, they've got it set for when they're chatting on Zoom or something. But when they sing, they're, they're a lot louder. And so they, you need before you start recording your, your singing parts, it's it's good to go into your system preferences and, and just get your microphone down to the right level for your singing. OK, and that, that's all. It, that's all it basically is, is um, an, an echo really comes from your environment. You know, so um, I just recorded recently an audio book where we use like 10 actors over clean feed. And, you know, we're all using kind of USB microphones like this, but to get them set, but most of them were like either in the little home studios with like little bits of you know, soundproofing or egg cartons and things like that, or they just kind of put a blanket around them. Because if you've got like hard walls and stuff, the set, you know, sound bounces off hard surfaces. If you're surrounded by curtains and carpets and, and things like that, if you're in a room with stone floors and things like that and stone walls, uh, it's it's hard not to get echo if you're in a room with lots of soft furnishings and and you put like a blanket behind you and stuff like that then that's going to help you get a much like clearer sound richard any any other thoughts on that um do you want to just just zoom into into your um into the audio file there and just show what the because it's probably topping out there on the oh yeah audio. there it is that's the bit if, yep. uh, let me just share screen you can you can tell if you look at the waveform that's, that's okay you see, you see that. that you see my waveform there how it's gone past the top you see that there when i was when i had my microphone set to the right level here you see that it's going into yeah. the yellow it's about there this bit watch it's going to hit the red and you can hear it distorting is there any way to fix that once you've done it well, yeah. there are there are plugins. I'm, I I Richard used really, one the other day on something, but they're really expensive. I'm going to show you actually. Um, uh, Let me uh, stop share that. Do you want to share? I think sharing's enabled. Jason, while Richard's sorting yeah, stuff sure. out, I, is it fair to say that um, software settings and the environment will outperform a better mic um, within most situations for what we're going to be doing? Yeah, yeah. So um, you don't you don't need like a super ex expensive microphone or anything. A lot of the mistakes people make are either just they're too loud or they're in a noisy environment, or they're in a big wide open space and, and things like that. Um, can you hear me yet? Yes, I can hear you. Right, okay. Sorry. Carry on. Carry on there, and I'll. I'll yeah. So, because um, I teach courses in podcasting and stuff, and I say to people, you don't need super expensive mic, but it, a lot of it's to do with knowing how to use the mic properly, how to set the levels, how to place it. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So when it looks like a flat top haircut, uh, this is this is Mike Flynn's recording for Bat Out of Hell. Um, so I'm going to just play it to you. This is what it actually sounded like. To see the light. Can you hear that? Nothing ever grows in this rotten old hall. Right. So there are things you can do with that, but not very much. And it's it's uh, it only it only reduces a tiny bit. So um, I think some of you may have seen it. But um, when I did, <laughs> let me just find Neil. Neil gave me Mike didn't give me permission to share. No, Neil did. Uh, where is it? It's um, uh, not that I really need permission. Um, where is it? Neil? <laughs> it, it, it is Neil. Um, so Neil's one, Neil's one doesn't look like this, um, but Neil's one was done with an absolutely abysmal six year old, um, microphone. Um, uh, let me just undo that and then show you that. Here we go. Uh, it's, so it's, it's one of those old iPhone headsets. Um, the really old ones. And it sounds like this. And like a sinner before the gates of heaven falling on back to it, it sounds like it's been kind of crushed, doesn't it? 
does. It does. It's it's. Whereas uh, you know, some someone like Joe is much clearer. So. Then like a sinner before the gates of hell. So it's it's a it's so the 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 quality of sound is so different. Um, so. Just be, be aware of that. If you can see the waveform and you can see that it's fl flat, flat, uh, flattening out at the top, it's distorted. Yeah, because when it's flat at the top, it means that the levels have gone beyond the top Yeah. and okay. then it's just got sliced off. So that's where you need to go and make sure you, the, the, your input of your microphone is turned down. In the old days, in the old days, when we would tape with, with analog tape. You'd have, a button, you'd have a knob. But you were encouraged to to go into the red a little bit because you were supposed to saturate the tape. But nowadays, so so if you yeah. grew up, um, you know, if you're about my age or older, then 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 you'll you'll kind of you might be uh, used to people saying, oh, you can go into the red a bit. You can't with digital. No, digital sounds awful when you do that. Um, uh, and Ed was talking about pillow forts, which are great, and they're not for distortion, but for getting rid of echo. So you can just build a, a duvets and stuff around the place. If you hang a duvet around on a clothesline or something like that around you, it makes a massive difference to, to getting rid of echo. Um, so uh, yeah. Jason, can, uh, uh, I mean, Ed, Ed did a very good thing on um, on the site uh, yesterday, I think. Yeah. Different microphones that are available. The one he recommended actually isn't available, it's sold out. Right. There's one that you can recommend that's a good one that would be available. Uh, that's a USB mic. I think now um, a lot of people have been buying that uh, toner one, which is which is like cheapest recommendation, and and uh, uh, Richard, I think that's probably good enough. Have for good the quiet stuff. I, I, went, I always go for. I I, really I've got a toner one here, like here. They sent me this to to do a review of. Uh, so it's not the one you've got. It's more. This one's about fifty quid, um, but. Um, it's it's good so it's a decent decent brand um those those like blue yeti ones that that, that i've got um that's what yeah I that's what you've got the so the yeti brand they're really popular really popular with podcasters as well um uh, i've got i've got a road okay this is a more expensive one they're really good it's about 120 quid okay nice nice that ones it's nice when they come with a little pop shield as well there's a pop shield there as well um, which is for those what are called plosive sounds. So when you sing like a, a P, like, um, you know, um, I'm going to have a party, you see. When you make a sound like a P, your, your voice spits out a bunch of air and that air hits the microphone and makes what's called a pop sound. You get this pop. And this is just like a little windbreak that diffuses that that air and so it doesn't hit the microphone as hard and and so, so that's why it's called a pop shield and you can get these ones okay these little ones about five pounds on amazon and you just got a little screw you screw them onto you and you just put them in front of your mic and, you know you, you see people in the studio you know and all this when they're doing you know the studio music videos singing into one of these and that just you can also make them you can make them with a, a pair of tights and some coat hangers yeah yeah and, uh, that was they're, they're usually better, actually. I, I like I like a old like school, a yeah. But so you've got a lot, of, you've got a lot of hard consonant sounds, and and you're singing. You you always get a better sound by being reasonably close to the microphone, not not right on top of it. But if you're on the other side of the room, then it's going to sound very echoey. You, you see, so if you're like about this distance away, it's going to be good. But of course, the thing about that is, if you're going to sing really loud into the microphone. You might get some what are called pops because your your voice will at certain points when you say p words or b words or ha um so having a little shield on your microphone okay a little pop shield uh will soften those hard consonants and and like i said it's like five quid it, you know a lot of the usb mics that toner one that 23 quid one which suggested has, has got one built in oh um and mark's got a fluffy okay that do does a similar thing that, that works as well helps it does it's usually not quite enough not though. quite as good as a pop shield but it helps so you can this is a rabbit hole that you can go down for a long time so i'm, I'm, yeah. I'm just i'm just creating a, a a video course at the moment and um the uh part of the thing is that i want to be a fair distance away from i don't want a microphone in my face for it um 
uh, and I want so I want it to sound like it's close mic'd, uh, but I don't want to see I don't want to see the microphone. But I don't want to get the room sound. I don't want to set, hear that echo from the room. We just call it a room sound. Um, so I I've got one of these, which is a uh, it's a it's a rifle it's mic. It's a shotgun, yeah. And so that, but it's really directional. So if I if I'm pointing it like that, it will pick me up um, from the other side of the room, and it'll sound like it's next to me. Uh, but if I point it slightly to the left or to the right, it, it won't pick me up. Um, so you've got to be really careful. But that's just going to sit there for me. So I'm going to hey, yeah. do it from here. So. You could, as I say, it's a rabbit hole you can go down. Yeah, I, I... you know, different. Like, there's a shotgun that I use a lot for film recording, because this is what you'll see on the end of like a boom pole on film sets, sort of pointed at different Point. actors, because shotgun mic, like these mics are what are called omnidirectional, so they don't, they don't just record what's coming straight. They'll kind of record, not 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 cardioid. They're called omnidirectional because all around, they're, they're not that great. But th this is popular for vocal recording, so I could be slightly off to the side, uh, and that's fine. Um, these these are called shotguns because you aim them at people and yeah. shoot. Okay, and and so they they've got a very you know they record from the direction. So they're good for putting on like a, a guitar sound hole and just getting stuff like. There's there's lots of you know, but like Richard says, um, you can get down a whole kind of. You can go onto forums and endlessly debate with people about microphones and things like that. But these a, kind reason, of a reasonably um, priced USB mic is probably all you need. Yeah, I mean these kind of mics have got so that the the Blue Yeti has got four polar patterns on it, so you can. Oh yeah, it, I use it for omnidirectional for the um, for, for rehearsals because it picks up all the sound from the room. So it's a, yeah, that's in the middle of the room, and then everybody gets picked up. But cardioid is the one where 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 the main bit of of the pickup is in front of the mic, so it's it, it's it's a, a in front and a little bit behind. Yeah, uh, but the mo the most it's called cardioid because if you imagine like a little heart shape around your microphone. Yeah, that that's the kind of area that it picks up the sound. Uh, um, Jason, can you is it possible to post a few uh, different ones that we can see? <coughs> I know if I go online, I'll see a million different things, and I'll yeah. Um, the wrong I, one that won't do whatever it's supposed to do. I'm, you've seen uh, my email yesterday, Terry. Yeah, I've, what I've done is, hang on, I'll show you. I'll show you this little link. I'll, I'll post it. I, I posted. Um, I put mine and Richard's and Ed's suggestions together on right. a little Amazon shop page. Okay. Um, Perfect. Yeah. And so uh, let me uh, let me just find. Let's just go here to Ed's. There it is. Ed's. Uh, I'll get the link for you now and put it in the chat. Here it is. Um, um, by the way, just while he's doing that, um, who didn't get an email from me yesterday? Good. <laughs> a lot of people haven't. It's really annoying. <laughs> OK, looks like a very long link. Sorry, sorry, Richard, are you talking the first email or the second or the what's that three? Um, so, so I'm I just going to ask the same thing. <laughs> I sent three. No, I yes. got three. You yeah, I got three too. There you go. Yeah. Rich, Richard, on that, can I just ask, well, do we get a Google form back to confirm we've filled it in? There should be one, but yeah. I'll, I, I, if you filled it in, it'll be there. Okay. You, there should be a confirmation, but you, it might have gone in your junk or something like that. Yeah. That's a reminder to Dr. Rich, so check your junk. Yeah, I definitely got one, so. I did too. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Okay. Um, so I just I pasted the link to this where I put everyone's. So so there's um, that's that's the chi that's the cheapest one that Richard recommended. Little yeah. pop shield, um, probably get, make make your sound ten times better than anything you're using on you know a laptop or a phone. Yeah. Even though it's reasonably cheap, and it's that price at the moment because it's got quite a heavy heavy discount on it. Um, and be, and I got in touch with them. Uh, because they sent me this microphone to review and said, can I get a discount code? And they said, well, it, it's discounted from like 32 quid at the moment. So just, just for this week. So they said that when that ends, they'll send me a discount code that I can share with choir members. No. So, so if you still want to, so I'll, I should get a, so I should stay at that price if you've got a code. So hopefully um, they're pretty good at stuff like that. At, uh, and the answer back straight away so so yeah so so yeah yeah and that it's got it's got good 
good reviews. And like I say, little kit, little stand to go on your desk, plugs into your USB, little pop shield. Bingo. And and that's that's on in stock. You know, that's in stock at the moment. Right. And then um and then you know you've got like the more expensive options, like the Yetis. Again, that's in stock. Um looks different, but pretty much the same kind of thing. Uh that's the one that Richard's got at the moment. Okay, that's out of stock at the moment because all the actors are using these for their Black oh. There might be a, you might be able to get a pink one. Oh yeah, yeah. Um let's have a look. Pink. Uh no. Only available. Uh, yeah, white, cool grey, currently unavailable. So that's a lot of the people where I was doing the audio book were using the Yetis. So they're very popular. Uh, the one I've got, the road, um that that was out of stock for a while. That's back in stock now. It's more expensive. Um but it's a really good one. Okay. But yeah, but you you know, you're probably not gonna be, be recording a platinum album um yet. So uh <laughs> so, so, so so that I'm sure that, that um the cheaper one's fine for, for your purposes. Um and Ed's Ed's recommendations okay. Oh this is USB and XLR. So that'd be fine too. Okay, it comes with a little stand. Um, little, little fluffy on it. Yeah. Jace, would you need a? That's out of stock. That? Only if you're doing it live. Okay, to record straight into a computer with a USB microphone, you just go in straight into your computer's sound. You know, um, if, if you want to do a live performance have your own microphone then you need to go through a pa system but for but for what we're talking about today which is creating videos then, then no it's it's just purely for recording so yeah okay, so, so on yeah. um can you show us how the levels show up on logic and garage band because i can often i can see it's in the red but there's two different there's a master one and the one for the track you're on and then i don't know where i'm making the adjustments Okay, let, I'll just fire up Garage Band first, and then uh, let me just think of it. You can while, while he's getting that up, you can yeah. think of it looking as in and out. Um, mm -hmm. So, so yeah. on the track itself, that's your in. That so that's what's that's what's coming into the mm -hmm. computer. Okay, um, and so that's the one you want to make sure is not going into the red. Really, when you so on on the so on the whatever track you're on on Logic. Um, yeah, that's, yeah. you want to, to be monitoring that to make sure that that's not distorting because if that's distorting if the overall master level is distorting you can that's the le that's the level that's coming out of the computer so you can reduce that later on okay, and that's, okay. that's not but the, when you're re when you're recording the important thing Hello. Uh, Hello. yeah what the important thing to do is to um, is to make sure that the track itself is not distorting and the way to do that so that that alongside the track in logic there's a little like electronic gain knob is that the one to adjust uh, no actually um let me just show you okay um share screen uh garbage band i'm going to cover some of this on yeah Wednesday. okay so here's my here's my track here now this gain knob okay that's not recording that's okay that's just the volume it's coming out right so like before if i go to my system preferences sound this is where so i'm going to set this low okay i'm just going to record a bit counting hang on let's just make sure i've got, uh, sure I've got sound on that it mm. yeah share okay. computer sound garage band here we go share If I'm recording, you can see here, okay? Hello, hello, I'm recording in Garage Band. Okay. Yeah, we got that. That's all right. Stop peeking. Play that back. Hello, hello, I'm recording in Garage Band. Got that? Let me do, let me do that again. 
going back, I'm going to set, I'm going to go and turn my microphone up in the system preferences. Like this. Okay. Hello, hello, I'm recording in GarageBand. Whoa. Okay, let me just. Uh, desktop. That's because I got into here and turned it right up. You see, the first one was about here. The second one was here. That's what sets your recording level on the computer. This only sets how it's played back. You see? Right. Hello. You Hello. See, I can turn that down. Oh, here. Hello, I'm recording. If I turn it right down, it's still distorted. Hello, I'm recording in garage bound. Still sounds terrible yeah. because this is just the volume knob for this track when you mix it okay it's not setting the recording level that's different in logic though isn't it um i don't think no i don't think it uh, you've got well, to so, so so when you're you're when you're dealing with because uh, because if you if you uh, i can't show you because um yeah let me stop um because uh, i well, use well, I guess maybe it's different if you've got if you're using a USB mic because I don't use a USB mic to record it. Ah, yeah, no, with the USB mic, it, it is. You've got to set the. Um, oh, I'll turn myself down. With the USB mic, even in Logic, you've got to set it in the system preferences. Oh, you set, set it. Okay, because no, that's how the because that that's how that's how the computer reads the microphone. So in Logic, right. so when you're doing through an interface, your interface is setting the level. Yeah. Um, but with a USB microphone, so so yeah, so so, so basically, so so so, so 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 are you saying there when when you talk about Richard's interface, are you got, talking about the fact Richard's putting it through other hardware first? Yes, yeah, he's he's got what? What have you got a Scarlet or something? Uh, I've got a no, I've got a Claret. Um, All right, yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's a it's a you know big. So so he's got um, proper knobs and things. Yeah. So this is like a professional yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. It's got if it's got knobs on it, it's professional. Uh, you see. Um <laughs> so so, yeah. so let me just go back to uh garage band. Uh, and this would be the same in logic. So what you always uh want to avoid is okay, uh open okay, so uh, oh. Let me just share this. Okay, I'm just gonna do Okay, so that was it. Okay, here we go. Let me just uh share the right wing the garage band. Okay. So I'm just gonna do do that quickly again. I'll take off the count. The count! Stop the count! One uh, okay. Uh, oh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, there's my track recorded at normal level. Okay. Oh, one. Two. And I can turn once I've recorded it, I can turn it down. Okay. Oh, one, two, three, four. Or louder. So when I come to mix the song against like the backing track and things like that, I can do that. But this slider isn't saying how it's recorded. This is only setting the level it plays back at. What I need to do when I record it is make sure that I don't, I've got my microphone set to the right level. So let me just set this up, record some counting again. Have one, two, three, four. So you can see there, have one, horrible. So you're always, basically the rule is, if it looks like that, where it, it's, touching the top and bottom and getting cut off, then you've got it, you're right. recording too loud. That's the golden rule. If it looks like this, where there's a bit of space above and below, great. Because you can always, even if it's too quiet, you can always turn it up a bit. Once it's distorted, that's gone. It's going to sound terrible, no matter what you do. You can take this, no matter, if I turn this right down, Boom. it still sounds horrible. Because I've got, it's, it's already distorted. So, 
so yeah, so for, for both Garage Band and Logic, you know, if you've got one of Richard's fancy interfaces where you've got knobs, you, that's where you can set the level. But for USB microphones, you need to go into your control panel on a PC or your system preferences on a Mac, find the sound settings and make sure you've got your microphone set so it's not too loud. That's the worst thing, just have it too loud. And the best way to do that is just test it by by singing a bit and seeing if it, if it looks like that or like that. If it looks like this or like this. So it's not particularly hard. To, once you've set it in your system preferences, that's set. Unless you're going back into your system preferences and change it again, then that that's the level it's going to remain at. So you only most of the time you only need to do it once, you know. Okay. And am I correct in thinking, Jason, that you're recommending that where possible we record into a PC or a Mac as a starting point, as opposed to a mobile device? Um, you do get more control that way. Um, if, but, but if you've got a microphone, if you've got a mobile, if, if you've got, if it's a choice between using your like laptops, webcam mic or a mobile phone, I'd say go with the mobile phone. They've got better microphones. Definitely. If you've got like 25 quid USB mic, then, you know, use like garage band, which is free on a Mac or audacity, which is free on a PC. Yeah. Uh, so free software uh, or oh, reaper reaper as well yeah um so so there's plenty of free software you record it and and the software you can all you you've all you can all see the software they've all got those levels that go from green to yellow to red so you can see quite clearly how loud your recording is so that that's also helpful because on a phone you can't really see how loud you are but if you've got a screen and you can see that level going up and down you can kind of say, oh, right, uh, stop now. <laughs> it's, it's way too loud. I need to turn that down, you know. But also listen out. Um, if, you're on, if you're doing it on the phone, so the, there's two things that can happen uh, with the phone. If you, if, you have it, if you have the volume too loud, it, even if the thing is recorded well, it can, play, it can distort the speakers. So sometimes your speakers are distorting and sometimes the recording is distorted. So mm -hmm. but just check, see if it, you, you're aiming for a clear sound with none of that horrible distortion. Um, so it's it, it before you send this stuff through. I wanted to. I, I was actually going to go the other way. I was going to look for. Um, I can't find it now. But um, uh, something that's really, really. Have you got? Have you got to hand or something uh, that's really quiet? And so, so when when there's almost no signal and you have to no, normalize it to, to to get a signal. Um, I go. Let me just quickly record something. So turn your volume down because you're really. Oh, I got. I, th I forgot. I'm not. I'm not to. I put my mic really quiet here. So for bad out of hell, I got a load of really quiet things, and there's sometimes it will, and it'll be like this. So what what I've done is another kind of. I can just turn myself a bit. Back to normal. What what I'm doing here is I'm going to record a little bit on Garage Band, but and but I'm going to record it really quietly. But I've also put a fan on in the background <laughs> to to really accentuate background noise because this is this is also a problem. All right. So um, let me just uh, share screen. Uh, Garage Band. I'm I'm sort of getting the feeling here, Richard and and Jason, that we've been giving you a lot of shite recently, and it's time oh, to get it sorted not, out. It's not, it's not true. It's just that. Uh, it is uh, true. No, You're sick of us. I just you should. There's no reason why you should know this uh, until now, when when suddenly we started doing it. You know, um, you know, I I didn't. Uh, this is stuff I, I do for a job. So I'm just, here we go. Whoa, I'm talking really quietly. Okay, um, so. Oh, actually, let me just. Uh, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to do this in logic, because don't yeah. have the normalize button in, uh, in the garage band. Can't hear you. He's just going to do this <laughs> logic. Bloody fan on the background. 
no normalize button in GarageBand, so he's going to do. do, 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 do. No, I'll explain what normalizing is while he's doing that. <laughs> no, normalizing is when you you take up whatever signal you can you can bring it up. You boost the signal up to the loudest it can go without distorting. So you bring everything up to zero dB. You bring sorry, you bring the loudest sound up to zero dB, which is which means that it, it it's peaking out as much as it can go. But obviously okay. it, it bring, brings up the loud sounds and the quiet sounds. So I've got logic up now. I've turned my mic back up to normal. I'm going to turn my microphone way down. I've got a fan on in the background. I'm just going to record a little bit and and then I'm going to normalize it, which is basically to, 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 to turn the volume right back up again. The owl and the pussycat went to sit in a beautiful pea green boat. They took some honey and plenty of money wrapped up in a five pound note. The owl looked up at the stars above and sang to a small guitar. Oh, lovely pussy. Oh, pussy, my love. You are, you are, you are, you are. What a beautiful pussy you are. So I've just done a bit of. Um, let me turn myself back up. Okay. So I just recorded a bit there, and as you can see, microphone way down, there's almost no signal. In fact, uh, I'm going to process it, uh, then I'm going to go and uh, normalize this. I forgot where it is. It's file. Go to file first. It's file, isn't it? That's the word it normalizes. Audio file. Functions. Uh, functions. There we go. Normalize them. Process. Boom. Oh. You see, I've just got loads of uh, fan noise. Um, let me do. Let me do one more. I'm going to make it a little less extreme. Um, it's just in preferences. Oh, that's why. I was say I don't think that recorded. Did any? I thought anything at all. Right. Let's try again. All right. This will be better. I have it set to my guitar amp. Okay, here we go. The owl and the pussycat went to sea in a beautiful pea green boat. They took some honey and plenty of money wrapped up in a five pound note. Here we go. So as you can see, I'll turn the fan off and turn myself back up. Okay, fan's coming off. All right, so, so here it is. See, in a beautiful pea green boat. It's it very quiet, yeah? You can all just about hear that, yeah? The owl and the pussycat went to see. So, obviously, um, you know, if Richard was doing this for quiet, he'd want everybody's level to be about the same before he started mixing things. So he'd do something called normalize it, which will kind of take all the tracks and, and put them to a set level. Um, so if I just double click here and go into functions, normalize. Okay. It's, it's now made that that's the kind of waveform you'd be looking for if it was recorded at the proper level. Okay. It's not, it's not flattening out at the top, but that, that's the kind of, but now if I listen to this, the owl and the pussycat went to sea in a beautiful pea green boat. It's not too bad, but you you can hear that fan uh, and so obviously when you're recording too quiet you know it's probably not as bad as too loud because at least it's not distorting but you will pick up a lot of extra background noise if i have, if you've got to really turn it up so the the problem occurs it's not it, i mean it's not the end of the world if 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 you're doing like if this, if this is your solo track and, and you've got a bit of that background noise. If there are 276 of you and you all have fans going on in the background or that level of, of background noise, it's 
It's so bad, honestly. It's it, you just hear this, uh, it's it's awful. So so I spend a lot of time cutting that kind of thing out. Um, so it'd be wonderful for the if for this new project. We don't have a lot of that. <laughs> yeah. So basically, turn turn everything off that might make a noise. Is there anything you can note in the recording and on that display that shows this background noise apart from just playing it high volume and listen very carefully? Okay, there... look, look, look here, here. I'm going to just um, record another section here. Um, oh, let me just record it after. The owl and the pussycat went to sea in a beautiful pea green boat. Okay, um, now can you see here? pea green boat um actually just record a bit more you can see it actually yeah the owl and the pussycat went to sea in a beautiful pea green boat okay now is can you, the, can you the see flat bits? the flat yeah. bits the flat yeah. bits here the owl and the pussy you see how the flat bits here outs are flat between the words that's your noise you see on this one the flat bits, there's a tiny bit of background noise. They'll always get a little bit, but the, the flat. The cat went to see. So you'll see that before you speak and in between your words, if it looks chunky, like here. Okay, let me just, um, yes. if it looks Cy ch chunky. Cycle that. Cycle that. I am. Yeah. Cycle it. There we go. I'll tackle. There we go. So I'll just get a bit of noise here. This bit. This bit will do. I'll turn this right up. Uh -huh, so. You hear that? And let me go up to here. There you go. You hear the difference. You can hear that on the original first recording. Uh, on the other recording, when I'm sort of looping a bit of just just background without the voice, it's pretty much silent. Okay, so you can you can sort of look on the track and see where it is. Okay, so it's like you've got to find the Goldilocks zone. <laughs> okay, and a lot of it's just setting it up with just getting your microphone to the right level and not being too noisy. So it's not too loud and it's not too quiet. And just get that, there's that little zone in the middle. And when you find that, then you're going to sound fantastic. So if we all were, yeah, just to just think that loud then, if, if, if we all just did that little check ourselves first, that yeah. would save you and Richard hours and hours, hours. later. Oh, God, yeah. I, I honestly mean hours here. The, 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 yeah. It, it's a it's a whole load of of time that that will save. <laughs> what one thing I always say to students when I teach filmmaking and stuff like that and and podcasting and things is the the five minutes you spend just checking things before you start it equates to like five hours spent trying to fix them afterwards. Yeah. So a you know, little so checklist. I in my studio here, so I've got an air conditioning unit and I've got a fridge, all right? And I have to remember to switch off the fridge before I do any record serious recording because it's got a thermostat in it and it'll suddenly go click um, and like that. And, and, you know, it's on at the moment um, because I've opened mic. <laughs> um, uh, but I haven't switched it off yet, but um, I will, if I need to do some recording, I will switch it off, hopefully. Because other, because otherwise, when I'm, re I may not even notice when I'm recording, um, but when when I come to edit it, I'll go, oh, hmm, that's going to be hard to get rid of. And so, yeah. and there's there's another thing that our brain it. our brains do. Our brains tend to filter out background noise when we listen to things. Um, so we don't tend to notice a fridge or an air conditioner too much, yeah. but microphone won't. Microphone will just pick that up. It's got no brain. It doesn't. Okay. It doesn't process the sound the way we do. So. so 
So just sat in the room at the moment, I've got two open windows where the curtains are open. Okay, close One them, close the curtains. Rows, close yeah. the curtains. Bit dampen the sound a bit, yeah. Obviously close the door, but the door's going through to the room next door where the kids are doing whatever they do, or the, or, or the dogs are going to walk around. Okay. So, so again, maybe put something on this side of that door just to muffle any sound. Yeah, and, or just checking your head, or just put your headphones on and can ask yourself if you can hear them. The thing is, it's never going to be perfect. It, you know, this is why people go to recording studios. I'm yeah. in a, I'm in a, I, so I had this built. This is um, this is pretty good in terms of sound soundproofing. But even still, if somebody drives past the front of the house with their stereo massively booming out like they do sometimes, I can still get. I'll still hear a something mm. now and then because it's it's the it's the it's the low frequencies which are really hard to to um, to get rid of. On those, you can da- you can dampen high frequencies, but even you know I've got I've got windows in here. There's not many, but that I wish I hadn't have had that window put in over there because it's a weak point. And if we have a nursery behind us, and if the if the kids are screaming in the nursery, I have to make sure I'm not I'm not recording at lunchtime, um, because that because you will pick up a little bit of it with a choir thing. That, that I'm not so worried about that because. You know, it's it, I'm I'm not everybody's not massively high in the mix. It's all kind of you know you can play around with with that, but it's just something to start working with. Yeah, and and if something bangs, for example, on somebody's track, you can just cut that track for that bit. But yeah. if you've got a background noise, then the background noise will be consistent throughout the whole track. So then you've got the problem of trying to remove it from an entire track. Mm. If if somebody just like a pan clanks, then just cut it for that you'll never notice that just for a second out of 200 and odd voices one's been turned down because it's a noise i'll show you some stuff keep keep, keep going I'll yeah so 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 consistent noises are much worse than you know if you've for 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 group things obviously if it's a solo recording and you've got a dog barking or a clank then then you kind of probably want to just do another take because it certainly sounds like we could do some really simple things at our end to make your oh, life God, so yeah. much easier it's, it's just you know and just to make things better for yourself so you you know uh, when you're doing things at open so mic and stuff you just i have a um a road m2 mic and i noticed yeah. that it picks up really like as as richard said the low frequencies because i've got trains passing every twice an hour and stuff yeah. and i try to sync my recordings when they're not passing through but to catch any other small sounds so would it be better for example when recording audio to as you said to have a pillow fort slash a shield around it or like a uh i forget the word now uh like yeah, the yeah. peanuts kind of thing so they muffle anything low yeah yeah, yeah. anything to sort of dampen the sound surrounding your environment yeah. is, is going to help with with you get you a cleaner sound the, the, the other big thing Richard talked about was leakage of the backing track from headphones because I yes. always well I always wear headphones with Bluetooth for my phone and sing into the laptop and when I get a mic I'll, I plan to continue. I wondered what is the kind of headphone leakage which is bad. I don't know if mine ever had a problem or it's not all it's not all these are quite good are they? Um, um, so those uh, that should be all right I think probably okay yeah um, yeah. Again, if you can, uh, again, one of these things is, is is to keep it as low as possible. In uh, so to keep your headphones level as low as you can. Obviously, you want it so that you can hear what's what's going on. But um, I, I, for example, when I'm doing these backing tracks, uh, these these like guide tracks, I try to keep so there's you can have a click, but the, sometimes a click can come out because it's it's a it's a high it's it you know it's like it's a ch- ch- out, yeah. um, and so you can sometimes hear that in the mix. Um, so you know when you're on a tube um, or you're on a train and you hear you, and you can hear somebody else's headphones. That's what you, that's what we're trying to avoid because the mic picks that up. Um, so um, the more the more isolated they are, so so the ones that have the little rubber tip and then they go right inside your ear canal, they're they're pretty good. Yeah, like that. Um, they're they're pretty good um, because you can't really hear a lot back from them. And also the ones. Lots of the ones that go over your head are really good. Some of them aren't. So uh, it's uh, you try it out with somebody. Just just say, see if you can hear them. You, see if you can hear the backing coming out when they're wearing it, and then you'll be able to tell whether the mic can hear it. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can find. Um, well, I've, I've got you've got a friend up, and I'm just gonna show you, if I may. Um, hopefully, you'll still hear me talking. 
Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So this is this is you've got a friend. This is the basses. The reds are the basses. Okay. If you've done the jigsaw, you'll see this, right? So this is everybody's track. Okay. I'm going to zoom out. There's a lot of tracks. <laughs> There's the picture you'll be familiar with. So let's just look here. I even had to, I even had to uh, cut a little bit out of Ben's, um, Ben's bit. See if I can find that. I can't. Ben's right at the top, but I can't see the bit that I had to cut out. Um, so let me pick somebody who won't mind me. Are those grey bits uh, the bits that you cut out of, Richard? Yes. Um, so, so. Jonathan, there's a few bits in there with you with you where there's a where there was just background noise, so I had to cut it out. Um, uh, but but it's the same with loads of people. There's loads and loads of gaps. Um, and if you go down down there, any of anything here, anything any basically anything pink here or, or lilac is 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 the track. Anything not is not down. Same here. Look at the tenors, right? And th this is where there will be. Um, this was quite funny. Um, let me see if I can find it um who was it again it was emma um oh no i can't find that no uh right there's two there's two michael ewers is there um <laughs> uh, he sent me two tracks so i thought i might as well use them um so a few people did that um so here i'm just gonna zoom in there yeah just while you're doing that, I've just pasted um, in the chat a little link to a video I made a while ago when people started doing the, the open mic videos, just just about why it's important to not hear the backing track in the recordings. Um, so I'm going to use bass if that's all right. Yeah. Right. So here we go. Here's Jace's part for one bit. I cut out something there. Can you hear it all right? I'll 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 stick it up mm -hmm. a bit. Right, so that, this bit here. Now let's see why I did that. Not sure. I, I'm not sure. I think it was because there's one no, there, there's one wrong note in it. It's be, begins, and he's saying begins. So I this is the level of detail I went into with this. Um, so most people did quite well if you look at that. Um, uh, let's look at Paul's. There's one bit here which I muted. This bit here. So there's that's a, definitely a bit dodgy in places there. So th that's how what, you, you would never notice that in the overall thing. To be honest, you wouldn't even notice if I muted your entire track, um, because when you've got two hundred and seventy-six people doing it, uh, you're not gonna you, you can't hear your individual voice. And if you can hear your individual voice, I haven't done a very good job in the mixing. Um, uh, uh, so, so it doesn't matter if there's the odd noise. We can cut the not when you're dealing with lots of people. You can cut the odd noise out or the odd bit that's not that, that's d distorted. But obviously, like like Stu says, it's just it's just to save us a bit of time with with um, you know producing a really good quality thing. So, just to ask a really stupid question, and it might be a really dumb one. Um, when I'm wearing headphones like this, obviously, I hear my voice very muffled. So if I were to cut one of these off the wire, 
So you only had one in one ear. Would that be a better solution? Jace, do you want to answer that? Uh, I don't think you need to destroy your, your headphones. Um, you, you could have, um, I think if you had one in, a one out, took, took one down your jumper or something, <laughs> I think it'd be okay. all right. Um, if you, you want to hear yourself. Uh, of course, if if you're recording on something like a garage band or logic or audacity and stuff, you, you do get the option to hear back through your headphones, what you're recording along with the track. Yeah. So you, you oh, get, okay. you, you're able to monitor the input so you can actually hear yourself better. And, okay. and you can even do things like not when you send it like to Richard or something, because it'll just want it clean. But you can even put a bit of reverb on yourself. And, and a lot of people say a bit of reverb when you're recording helps you pitch it better because you can act, you can sort of still, you've got that little tail so you can hear the notes that you're singing. Got to um, watch that though, because it, because we, when we, whenever we ask for things, they, yeah, they always turn totally, it off. Yeah, totally dry. Yeah. Uh, without any effects on there because, um, because the, so, yeah. Yeah, we want to do turn it off before you send it. But sometimes it, it can help you just get a little, little in, hear yourself a little better. Mm. But some people prefer it. But a, a classic uh, studio thing is to take take one ear out. Yeah, and... yeah, but you see it all the time, don't you? Like band aid, yeah. that kind of stuff, you know. So <laughs> just just you know. So oh, you know, so, so nice things about having airports like this is you can just look like you're a bit of a bit of a rock star in the studio doing that. And just have one at the back of your head, so you've got one ear on yourself, one ear on the track. Yeah. In terms I mean, of but... using two devices, if if you don't have a USB mic and you're trying to do a project like this, a mass thing, mm. is it better to listen to the track on your laptop? If you've got, say, a phone and a laptop, is it better to listen to the track on your laptop and sing into the phone? Like, yeah, you've got a little standard rather than the other way around. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say if you, um, if you don't have a, if you don't have a USB mic, I would say yes. Like you've got one there, I've got a little yeah. one here. The about five quid. These things stick that in front of you, where basically where you'd put a microphone, so you're not holding it, so it's not moving about, because that can make noise. Have it nice and steady. Have your headphones on your laptop, listen to the track, and record it on here, because. This this microphone, this this phone microphone, is likely unless you've got a very old phone to be better than the crappy little mics that they put in the webcams on your computers, which are really only designed so you can do Skype and Zoom and things like that. You, you know. Um, but 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 with so just to get clear, I bought the mic following Richard's advice. Yeah. If you've got a mic to avoid having to have two sets of things going. Audacity will allow you to play the yes. backing track through your headphones via like a Bluetooth headphone. At the same time, you can sing into the mic. Yes, because uh, Audacity lets you do multi-track. So one track could be the backing track. That could be playing back. Your second track could be your voice. And you, you can you can hear the voice and record. And then you've got two tracks when you finish recording. What is what you know that you've got you've got the uh, backing track and then you've got a second track which is now your voice track and they're separate tracks so you can mix them and you can you can add some like reverb or stuff to your your voice track get it all. I'm it looking all at the back. actual recording of the voice. Yes, issue. no, no, they do. So and so you play it back. You're playing back in Audacity at the same time as you're recording in Audacity. So you put your backing track in Audacity as one track you start an, an empty track and that's for your that's for you you hit the record button it's going to start playing the backing track as it's recording so you're hearing you're hearing the backing track and you're also recording at the same time but you have to import the backing track into audacity yeah you just drag and drop you just like you get the file drag it in and it becomes a track in audacity but but when you then send that oh yes really important when you then send that you have to get rid of the backing track so because if you if you send it as a as a file and yeah. it's got the backing track on it we can't extract that you have to yeah. get rid of the backing track before you send the file now now easiest way to do that is all these garage band there we go garage band logic audacity you'll see them they'll all have little things like m and s 
There they are. It's not Marks and Spencers. That's mute and solo. Okay. So if I mute a track, you can't hear it. Okay. And then... Pulling the pussycat. So basically, before you send it, mute your backing track. So it's just one click. You just mute. Mute any tracks that you don't intend to send. Okay. So it's very quick just to record it with the backing track. Then when you come to send it, turn the backing track off by just hitting the mute button. You don't have to do any, you don't have to delete it or anything. You just, just you can stay where it is, but just mute it. The one thing you may find if you are recording um, video and you're using Bluetooth headphones is that you may find that the video and the audio are out of sync. Yeah. That, that doesn't matter if you're sending it to, if you're sending it to us, um, uh, because A, I don't, it doesn't matter at all because they'll be there if you if you moved them together they'd be in sync so that yeah they're, they're recorded correctly and i won't be processing the video i'll just be processing the audio so as long as i've got the audio and whoever's doing the audio the video has got the video then that that will be, that will be fine so don't worry if it's for your own if it's for your own thing that might be a bit of an issue. I don't know whether Jason's got any uh, anything to say on that, but, but yeah, it just makes less work for yourself because obviously, if you're filming like a performance and you're using for the sound like Bluetooth headphones or something, it, it does tend to create a bit of a delay, okay, over over like wired headphones and, and things like that. So then you've you've obviously you, you've got to like take it into like an editing program you know, uh, and then take the tracks and nudge them a bit so they're back in sync. Obviously, um, if you don't, if that doesn't happen, then you've got less work for yourself. You don't have to do that. You, you know, if, if it's if it's in sync from the start. Uh, so, so yeah, so just, just the nature of Bluetooth, because it's been sent over the connection, can lead to sort of delays. So, so, so back to the comment on Facebook last night. Why yeah, old, is, old school why is, is good. Whatever possible. Wires and knobs and <laughs> yeah, things like that. Old school is is always great. You what, know. What, what was that, Stuart? What did you say? Um, just back to the comment on Facebook last night. I put a little question there. You know, wide is wide is is preference to Bluetooth and anything fancy. Just go back to wide every time if we can. Yeah, yeah. I have yeah, wide. Yeah. I have wide in the studio. I mean, yeah. I have, I have Bluetooth headphones when I go running because I don't have don't have to connect to anything. But mm. you know, when I'm listening to stuff, it's fine. But when you're actually recording, then Bluetooth's not not great. Uh, Mark's got a raised hand. Yeah, um, I was going to ask, uh, going on to filming. Yeah, sure. About starting I... uh, starting your projects and what you should be doing. Okay, um, right. So, yeah, because we've, we've talked about an hour and a quarter on audio. So just before we jump on to filming, any, any other kind of audio-related questions before we get on to the kind of Gary? Can you recommend a out of the many on YouTube, a decent garage band and Audacity tutorial. Also, I'm a Mac user, so do I need Audacity or? No, use GarageBand. Okay, but you know how I mentioned in the last open mic, there was static and hiss on some of the, on the yeah. audio. GarageBand, I didn't, would the tutorial help me figure out how to get rid of it? Um, okay, so, because um, you sent that track to me and I used something yeah. called Audition to fix it, which is right. the Adobe okay. program, Audition. which has okay. got some very good, the, the, there are plugins you can, you can get for that. Okay. But if you've got, it's likely that if you've got it set up at the right level on a USB microphone right. in the recording stage, then you yeah. probably won't get a noticeable amount of hiss or distortions or, okay. um, so, so, um, so, so, so there's various plugins and tools you can use to, to clean hiss, um, or things, things like that. But a lot of it is if you, if you just get it right in the first place, yeah. then you probably won't have to. I just recorded it on my iPhone, a very old. Yeah, that's the thing, you know. Um, but you 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 say you bought a, a USB mic, so it's actually an XLR, the one I have. The an XLR, and... yeah. So you can use it live as well. Yeah. So, but you've, okay. got, you've got an interface for it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You okay. Use iRig, yeah. An iRig, perfect. Yeah. They're great. I've got one of those too. I've got an iRig back key. I've got and I've got an iRig mic as well. Okay. And 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 so sometimes I use this. Yeah. Um, the iRig works great. 
as well and uh, with the iRig as well because it's XLR there's a little dial on it to set set the input level right and um, um well it depends what iRig you've got um it's a pre sorry it's the iRig pre okay I'll have a look at that online yeah. but um but the iRig the iRigs are very good um you okay. you having a chat so separately like yeah we, we, what we could do Gary is is when you do your next recording we can have a zoom just to make sure you've got the right the best settings for what you're doing yeah yeah, okay. yeah. can I ask sorry, sorry but before you be, be just going to the next thing then um Richard Jason just just thinking out loud about your project coming up is it possibly worth just sending out a bit of a video top 10 checklist to do before you start recording to make your life easier definitely going to do that yeah yeah not not an email written one but uh but a, but a quick two minute video yeah, one yeah yeah yeah. good 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 uh, good idea actually and, and also in, in the chat i posted a link to one of my videos it's a little video i made explaining why it's important to um record with headphones so you don't you don't have a bleed from the backing track so sort of the reasons for that but also on that on that same channel as I've, I've got a lot of tutorials for garage band and audacity and editing tutorials and stuff like that and how to record how to record on phones so um so i've, I've done a bunch and, and quite a few of them have been in recent months in response to particular choir related things so i've got quite a few vi like explainer videos uh, like um demonstrating you know how to how to record in audacity for example or garage band and stuff like that so and you can always give me a shout and uh, if there's something specific, and I can always make another tutorial video because I, I, I do quite a lot of those. Can I ask one other, what maybe silly question? When it comes to the issue between Apple and PC, once the recording's made, the the form of the the track, the MP3, it you could you can work with someone if they've recorded through a different yeah, uh, and that's no issue at all. No issue. Yeah. Um, if if you've got um, like when you come to export your track be it in garage band or logic or audacity or stuff like that you can have different options for how you you send it like for example mp3 or wav or, or something called AIFF. a i f f um better to send it as, as like a wav file it's a bigger file but an mp3 is like a compressed file so uh, so if rich is doing some editing on it it'll um I think you'd, you'd prefer, wouldn't you, like a WAV? Always. If, if, always. The, if the option is there for AIF or, or WAV, WAV um, then pr I'd prefer that. But just because there's two reasons. Uh, MP3, when, when we say compressed, it basically MP3 takes out information that that theoretically we're not really, we, we can't really hear. But it does, arguably, the sound does get, uh, it d does get degraded. Um, and also there's a thing when when you get mp3 and it's then it's then bounced to another mp3 and then it's done again it starts to bring in uh extra little sound artifacts and artifacts things and um, so it it's it can it can lead to some problems so if you have the option uh save it as the as the the higher quality file so so richard just as a just a gut feel what percentage do you get in a better format compared to mp3s Oh, uh, I probably MP3 is okay. It's the high. It needs to be a high quality MP3. Um, mm. I would say I get most most of them come as MP3s. I'd say. I'd say. So, if, so if we all were to give you either high quality MP3s or a better file format, again, it make your life easier straight away. Yeah, one nine six. If you if it asks you on a, on the MP3 what to, to save it as, one nine six would be great. Um, it doesn't need to be higher than that. You'll you. you Audacity gives you the options of this, and 196 is great. We need to I'll answer Mark's question. Um, because yes, like... so, yeah, okay. So moving on to film. So, Mark, you're talking about, well, how do you mean by setting up a project? Do you, do you mean planning for your project or setting up, like, a, the... Um, well, I, basically, I've got quite a complex one on the move right now. I know. Um, and, <laughs> and I had to sit down and do a, um, basically, line by line, what I was going to wear, what I was going to sing, what accent I was going to sing it in, and then uh, do the shots like that. So, because I'm doing it with green screen. Yeah. So, uh, basically, I had to 
to a form so it's with serial numbers on it so i know where to go and and there's a couple of I don't want to do it chronologically because I don't want to be getting in and out of the same costume. No, there's no need to so, do that. So that, well, that's what I mean. So that's if everyone knew about that, then perhaps they would save them a lot of angst later on. Yeah, so well, formatting uh, it all at first. I mean, very few films, for example, are shot in chronological order. They shoot them in the order at which it's easiest to film the scenes. So, mm. you know, if you've got the same costume on at the start of the film, the same costume at the end, and doing the same look, okay, they won't. They won't film the first shot of the film at the start of the shooting oh. and then wait to the end. They'll just do them both on the same day, you know? So, so it's because you put it in sequence when you do the edit. So it doesn't matter what order you film it in, you've yeah. got a plan and you film it in the most convenient order for your access to the locations or if you have to change costume much or, or if you have to do any fancy makeup, get all those shots done in that makeup in one go, even if the ones at the start and ones at the end of the video, that's where the editing comes in, where you, okay, I'm going to chop these now and I'm going to put this bit at the start, this bit at the end. So yeah. it's always My, better sorry. to, you know, so, so, so yeah, make it as easy for yourself as possible. My other issue is that I'm going, I've got 11 uh, lines now of cuts. And when I cut something, I find that I've, some stuff is gone as well or it's moved to the right so it's out of sequence and so i don't know why that's happening oh, i find right. that i've cut them the voice as well i've cut the okay um that's something that's probably just a, a, like a, a just because you're quite new to editing and you're probably just making some schoolboy errors so um what i'd say with that is get your edit together and a bit and then we can do a zoom and I can sort of say, oh, you, you, you're you doing this wrong. OK, so, the, the you, you know, the thing is, when you cut something in a video, video editing is what's called non-destructive. When, when you actually cut something out of your video, it's still there. It's still there on your hard drive. You know, a lot of people think, oh, well, I've chopped it off. It's gone forever. Um, it, it's not. You just when you when you edit video, you just take references to your source material and put them in a certain order. So you never lose things. They're never gone forever. If you think, oh, I've, I've cut that, it's chopped that bit off. It, it's still there. It's still there on your hard drive. It's just not on your, it's just not on your video at that point in time. So you can, you can always bring it back, you, nice. you know. <laughs> but, um, yeah, unless you do something <laughs> catastrophic, like like delete I, it by accident. Well, I, I, I still make those schoolboy errors from time to time on Logic, so on the, on the audio thing. Yeah. I, I have, I have, when I have a, if I've had a file like, like, when you can't see the bottom or the top, you know, you're somewhere in the middle and suddenly and you cut something and then you d you didn't realize that you had a track that's out of your view also highlighted and you cut it and deleted it. Um, that I, That's happened to me on a number of occasions. Yeah, because logic uh, gives you a kind of um, logic kind of some has this past you said, do you want to delete this? And you, you take a button and say, yeah, and it'll yeah. delete it from your hard drive, whereas I, you're a little bit safer with video editing tools because if you delete it, it never actually like Premiere will never just delete it. It'll always just right. stay there until you actually open your hard drive, drag it into the trash, and right. bin it. So, so, um, so you, whereas you can do that in Logic, you, you can't so much in Premiere. Yeah, cool. Now, now I hope you don't mind, Mark, but um, you just brought up a good issue um, because quite a few people um, over the last couple of months have been doing. Uh, green screens and you just mentioned that you've got like a bunch of green screen shots all right and and so um i've got a couple of examples of like how to shoot a good green screen versus a bad green screen so, so the, the thing to remember is how green screen works and all it's doing is it's taking one color from your shot and making that transparent so that we can put something behind it so the reason it's usually green is because green's very far removed from our skin tones and our hair. So unless you're the Incredible Hulk, you know, um, and it's quite easy to say to people, there's, there's Richard, there's green. It's quite easy to say to people, don't wear lime green today, you know, um, in, your, in your clothing. So green's a very popular color. In theory, it could be any color. We could take any color out of the background, but, but green. So. Uh, let me just share the screen. So 
We've got, uh, so I had to put Mark on the naughty step for Bat Out of Hell and make him do his again. Okay. Uh, for this reason. Uh, so we're talking schoolboy errors here. Okay. So, so here's, um, there we go. Let's go back to this one here. So here's my timeline. Get rid of all that audio. Okay. So, um, little, little, little pop quiz here okay 10 points to who can answer this what's wrong hey, with mark's back, what's wrong with mark's me. background mark's excluded because i told him oh. what's the problem with mark's background in the there's left a, there's a gap between the green screen and the edge of the that's end. not that's not important on this side it is, is it on this microphone stand no no what the blue what? light yes <laughs> it's look it's not green but <laughs> Thought he was being super duper funky by adding to his green screen shots the addition of some um, classic 70s disco lights, which come in all different colours. So so they'd be going from... So sometimes it was... There you go. Sometimes it's mostly green. Sometimes it's blue. Okay, sometimes it's red. So, so if you look here... I've put the I've put the green screen filter on Mark. You see what's happening here? When that blue kicks in, look, he's suddenly I, I want him on the beach, okay? And also, and this shot here, okay, he's got a green disco light on this side, which is illuminating his shirt. So suddenly, bits of Mark are disappearing. Look, he's got he's full of holes. <laughs> Okay, so what you just want is a always, white... thought of, always thought that about Mark. Yeah, for, yeah. So so Hello. there you go. So that's Mark's thing. Now on this one here, okay, this this was this is my my meat. All right. So you can see here, I've I've got things around the edge. Um, now that's not a problem as long as I don't cross them. So on Mark's here. On um, let me just go back to here. On the on the right side of Mark, let's go to it. Okay, you can see he's got the green screen, but on this side, he's gone off the edge of the green screen. So so all around here, that's not green anymore. It's not going to work. It's not going to take the green out. It's it's the wall. So you've got to make so on here. Even though I've got a chair and a bit of wall, I'm surrounded. <coughs> I'm surrounded by the green screen. So I can simply put a mask on that. <coughs> I can put a mask around me. So I'm just inside that mask to get rid of the edges. Easy. And then when I put the uh, the green screen effect on, there you go. Nice. Because I've got a, I've got a bit of shadow, but it's still... I've, see, I've put a couple of lights on from either side. Still green. But it's still green. as long. So it's a bit darker in some places and brighter. But I just fixed that in the effect by twiddling with the contrast. Okay. But it's still essentially green and nothing on me. <coughs> I've got a ginger wig, a white shirt, a purple top, blue jeans. There's no green there. So I'm not green. The background's green. So that's the, and you can see I've got a nice, also <coughs> quite a nice, um, uh, I've, I've, um, I haven't got, I've used a couple of pegs, so the bit I'm in isn't very wrinkled. Okay, nice smooth green screen. So that, so if you're doing, if you're doing that, <coughs> that's the trick. Make sure you're always surrounded by your green screen. If you come off your green screen, it's not green anymore. And try and keep your lighting nice and even. So it, so the green background doesn't become contaminated by other colors. So you don't get like, um, like like this there you go so you can see there there's nothing um so mark mark, mark ended up doing this this again for the for the meat love video because I, I i just i just couldn't fix that even we try to mask out his head and stuff you can see his kind of head's disappeared here because the blue light's so extreme and he's gone you know it's it's it ruined a magnificent performance Aww. but uh but there you go uh there you go. So, 
So again, it's that thing where if you set it up right, so just you know, make sure you're stood in the right place, things like that. That 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 ten minutes you spend just making sure your green screen or whatever your or your shot or whatever you're doing is good, save you a lot of hassle trying to trying to fix it, and sometimes it's unfixable. Yeah. Show us the fixed version. Oh, the fixed version. Um, let me uh, let me just go. And so if we go, into I'm not it, in it. You are. Hang on. There we go. Let me go. Uh, I got, I've got it here. Uh, uh, that's, there's Mark. Uh, here we go. So. Okay. So in the fixed version, break it out now for the ready crack of dawn. So we gotta make the most of this one night together when it's all we So you can see there, much better. We haven't got any colours and things like that. So there we go. Oh look at that. And if anyone's looking for a Mick Jagger. There we go. <laughs> or or Robin Asquith. Yeah. Or Guns N' Roses. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I got Robin Asquith. Yeah. <laughs> but your window's cleaning. Yeah. He's a mate of mine. Is he? I know him quite well. Um so um so so yeah, so the second one you did you sent me, you were stood and the other one, and I know it was Mike Flynn that filmed it for you. Um but he had you at a weird angle. You were sort of side on and so, that's, that's the navy for you. There you go. Yeah, there you go. So this is the other one you were saying, you were just straight onto the green screen. You were surrounded by the green screen, no funky lights, so your background was a consistent colour, and then I was able to do a much better job of putting you on a different background. Um, so yeah, so planning. It's all about it's all about um, thinking about thinking about things before you do them and try to fix them after. Jason. Yes. What um, I use Windows. Yeah. So what's, what's the best? What sort of software would you recommend? Filmora. Filmora. Or Filmora's something? popular. You use that, don't you, Mike? I, I do. Yeah. Th that that's that's a good one. I'll post a link to the article I've got. Um, also, um, Filmora is it, Filmora paid. I think it's quite cheap I, though. Yeah. Is it is it quite about, cheap. Yeah. Is it about forty pounds. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that that's that's quite. I, I tried it out because I was helping Mark with something. And I thought it was it was pretty good. Yeah, that's what um, I sent the video that I sent to you. That's what I've used. Yeah, and that was great. There was no, no problems with that at all. There's lots uh, of free downloads as well. That's good packs. Okay. Yeah, so plug, they, plug they had a pack. Halloween pack and yeah, yes. So so in, in the kind of um, I was looking earlier in the kind of free price range on a PC. There's something called Shortcut, which looks okay. Um, if you want to spend about forty to about seventy quid, then something like Filmora, or um, I use Premiere Pro, uh, which is quite expensive, but that's what Richard uses too. It's brilliant. Um, uh, it's paid for by subscription. But there is uh, something called um, Premiere Elements, which is a light version but it's got pretty much everything you'd ever need from premiere in it and i think that's about 69 pounds or something like that and 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 premiere's excellent um that's what that's what i use so in the mid price range like filmora premiere uh premiere elements uh, uh, uh yeah that's that's two recommendations i've got a little article that I, um Arisan was asking me about earlier okay, I, I shared Oh, Interesting, uh, Jason. We've managed to get the Premier um, Adobe stuff cheap by virtue of fact that my daughter's got a student discount. So, oh yeah, you can get student. So while she, she's using Illustrator and everything, we've got the Premier. Oh, and also, if any of you work in offices and stuff like that, you might actually have Premier Pro because if your office uses things like Illustrator and Photoshop and things like that, you might have a works Adobe license for the whole suite, and so. All you all you need is the or, password, or even Adobe Acrobat. Yeah, whatever. Um, so a lot a lot of workplaces use Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, all these kind of things, and 
you 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 might find because it it's subscription so you you log in with the username and password to activate the software so you, you might actually have a password that you can use and you don't have to pay anything and there's lots of deals as well lots of deals on stuff so you know black friday deals and things like yeah. that yeah i did the deal where i got mine for like half price by um quitting i i i even though, even though I had no intention of quitting because I use it for work, somebody told me this tip. I cancelled my subscription and then it said, are you sure? And I said, yes. And then after you've clicked about twice, are you sure? It says, well, what if we give you a half price discount? And then you click, yes. <laughs> and you say, okay. So um, so there's little tricks to like get cheaper subscriptions um, and stuff like that. Um, Mark, are you watching television? Oh, sorry. No. <laughs> No, I'm not watching television, but I know someone who is. Right. Um, yeah. So, so yeah. Um, but you don't need because you to to make a kind of average um, sort of open mic video that pe people are putting together. You don't need a super expensive no. bit of editing software stuff. You just need something that can cut a few tracks of audio, a few tracks of video together, no. and most either free or just lower priced software is perfectly fine to do that so you're not talking about spending fortune here to to get like quite a decent bit of software to edit you know yeah. again there is free stuff but you know if you pay a little bit you tend to get a lot more options so like filmora or premiere elements um they both work on mac and pc as well so so it doesn't matter what you've got you can get you can get them for both Thank you. That's all right. Any more filming questions? Just a really simple question. Yeah. Video first or audio first when you're putting it through the software? Um, what, what do you mean? Drop it in or? Yeah. Do you, do you make the visuals fit the audio or do you make the audio fit the visuals? Okay. So I'll tell you the, the usual the workflow for, for putting together, say, an open mic video would be to um, record record your audio first. OK, get get your track done. So so I, 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 I did I did my Christmas open mic track. I've got that done. I did that yesterday. So I, fin I finished the audio for that. I've not even started on the video. I kind of think I think I know what I'm going to do, but I've just got the audio track. Uh, and then what I'm going to start doing is filming shots that I'm going to start dropping onto onto the audio to fit the audio um, rather than the other way around okay because so 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 I'm not because I'm not going to want to be moving I don't want to move anything on the audio you know the audio has got a beat and a tempo and everything's in the right place that's set I'm, I'm simply going to make make the video fit my track okay so so I'm always going to start by the whole process by getting my audio track done first and then fitting my video along with that. Because obviously if I'm going to be lip syncing to it, I'm, I'm going to need that track to be able to play back. So I'm going to need my track to be done before I start doing lip syncs and, and all that. So, so yeah, so I always do, do the audio, get, get a track that you're happy with and then start making a video to, to go with that track any thoughts richard yeah obviously that's in the context of doing music if you're doing yes if you're doing yeah. a film it, it's kind of well it's kind oh of yeah like if, you, if you're doing a drama or something like that yeah. yeah i'm talking specifically for a music video here for, yeah. for like an open mic video a music video yeah, yeah. The, you know the, the track comes first you know you you don't you don't get Duran Duran on filming themselves on a yacht and then say right lads let's go to the studio and do a yeah. let's do Rio. <laughs> yeah. Can I just ask about copyright? What do we ever have to worry about when we do um, our videos? Um, in terms of like sharing on YouTube or stuff like that. Yeah. Okay, so um, years ago, YouTube would like block a video if it had copyrighted content. Um, so it might detect um, that you've done a so. So you say you've done, you did mini, mini the moocher, right? It, it might go, oh, this is you know, copyright Cab Calloway, isn't there? You know, and it, uh, but it doesn't. YouTube doesn't take them down anymore. Um, wh what it will do is it will say, 
okay, this is a cover. This is your cover of somebody else's song. So, and YouTube's algorithms will sort of de just detect that now. And and so what they'll do is they'll say, okay, so any, way, any sort of YouTube revenue from advertising on YouTube that comes through people watching your video, then a percentage of that will go to the songwriter, the uh, and uh, the the people who own the rights to the song, and if you if your channel is monetized, then a percentage might go to you. So it's not it's not a big issue because you're not if you were using it say for TV and using somebody else's song to do a TV ad, then that that's very different. But for your own YouTube channel, you're kind of safe whatever you do to to put it up there, and you won't get any kind of strikes against that. It'll just recognize that you've done a cover. And it might send some pennies. Occasionally, you'll get a strike. So, so uh, when we do the quiz, um, so sometimes there'll be a, a copyright strike there because ah, yeah. those people. The, but, those but on the quiz, what they're doing is they're showing the original. The original, yeah, that's true. So they're, yeah. they're actually showing the original clip from a film or the original song. But we, but if you're doing a cover, then because you're not showing the original you're not using the original in your own work yeah you're probably you're, you're okay, okay. So, so so if i did a round of um what's the original song that this is a cover of it would be perfectly fine wouldn't yeah have yeah yeah if you if you were to record some covers and and do a quiz playing your covers back then they're your covers and mm. youtube might sort of um sort of stream any revenue that comes from like pop up ads and stuff to the people that wrote the original song and stuff but you you wouldn't get a copyright strike for that okay any anything else any other questions yeah i've got one any tips for filming videos by yourself because i've got nobody to film them for me or anything yeah. like that so any good tips of how you do it by yourself? Are you filming on, on a phone? Yeah, well, my tablet most of the time, yeah. Okay, tablet. So, so um, one thing, use a stand for your tablet so you can get it in, in the, right, the right place. Um, does your tab tablet have a front and a back facing camera? Yeah. Okay, so try not to use the camera that you'd use for like a selfie. Okay. Um, you flip it round, so you so you can't see yourself. Yeah, probably better anyway. <laughs> it's better. You'll give a more natural performance. It's, you know what you do. Um, be, uh, because the it's it's always that camera that's the better camera. So, so on my iPhone, this camera is way better than the camera on this side, the sort of selfie camera. When we did Mark's Scooby Doo thing, you had a little stand and you put your and I said to Mark, no, 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 to turn it around that way and we can shoot it in a much better, higher resolution. Yeah, okay, because you don't you don't need to see it. You don't need to see. You don't need to do a selfie. And also, um, you tend to sort of look at yourself as well. You see, and that and 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 so you, and so you can with this you can focus on just doing your performance. And, and also, when you look at yourself on a phone, if it's like that, when you're looking at yourself on the screen, looking at the phone, <coughs> well, the camera's sort of slightly off to the side. So you, your eye line's a bit weird because you're not looking at the camera. But if, you, if you've got, if you can see the lens, you tend to look at, straight at the lens. Okay, so your eye line tends to go straight to the camera lens, not to watching yourself on, on your little screen. Okay, so, 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 yeah, so don't, don't watch yourself, don't film it, don't film it with the screen towards you. These, these cam, the, they always put the better camera on this side. Yeah. And, and it's less distracting for your performance if you just set up the shot nicely. Okay. Um, so imagine where, you know, so if you don't have anybody to help set up the shot, just imagine where you're going to be and maybe just do a little test. Yeah, you might have to do some testing. And just just shoot, yeah, a, shoot you, you a couple don't know of seconds. How many tests happen before I feel okay. many? <laughs> okay, so yeah, do a few tests. Make sure you're happy with the shot, and then and then film it um, with with this side camera. 
and you probably get a nicer performance because you're not as consciously looking at yourself and the video quality will be will be better um, jason i i got a stand for mine which came with its own shutter remote control oh yeah yeah you can get so remote, you can just get click it little bluetooth remote control and, and, and that, that was 17 pounds yeah uh, blue yeah. bluetooth 17 pounds it, it, it actually you know, I've, I've got a, I've phone. got like a selfie stick. Um, where is, oh, it's here. One sec. One is Talk getting it. Yourself. One is getting it. Delphine, those those headphones are exactly what I'm talking about. Those that. So when you when when we can hear you, there's so much hiss on there. Okay, so I've got a selfie stick here. So don't really use much as a selfie stick because it just pulls out as like a tripod, and the bottom. This is about ten quid on Amazon. But the bottom pulls out and it will just sort of, I can just stand that up. And in it is, this slides out, it's a little Bluetooth remote. So I can, so when I want to start and stop, I don't have to keep going walking back, back around the other side of the camera. I can just push that and boom, off you go. Okay, so that's a little tripod, little stand. I can, I can set up, you know, on a phone. Obviously Mark's got one for a tablet. You know, so any, anything, these, these, this kind of stuff isn't expensive. Go on Amazon, these, these, yours was 17 quid, you say, Mark? These things, little, little accessories like this can make a huge difference to, to making it easy for yourself to record stuff. Um, yeah, so, so yeah. Is that, is that helpful, Delphine, about? Yes, thank you. About and I'll filming. make sure I don't use oh, those headphones. And, and another thing about, about next week. Yeah. And, uh, and about um, just just about lighting as well. Um, some people um, like like Jonathan there. You see, he's got he's got windows behind him, uh, which is fine for our call. Um, but if you can see very bright behind him, and if he was filming with the camera that way, and Jonathan stood in front of the window, all the light is behind Jonathan, and so that will tend to make Jonathan in that particular shot look like a silhouette. He'd want to face the other way, so the way light coming in through the window is on his. So, so the, so the window is behind the camera. Okay, um, so I've noticed on a few few videos I've been sent, people have shot, doing the videos both for the the choir and a couple of the kind of earlier musical ukes ones we did. I sort of said to people, oh, you might want to think about not standing in front of the window, with your back to the window. But going around the other way, so the light from the window is illuminating you. That way, you're not in shadow because all the lights behind you. Okay, because sunlight is very bright. So if you're so so, I always encourage people not to stand with the back to a window and the camera facing them. Stand face the window with the camera between you and the window. Then you've got that natural light making you a nicely lit shot okay so so yeah and again you can see it yourself if you film yourself and you look and you look dark but the background looks bright then you know you're kind of stood in the wrong place because you want to be the focus not not the background yeah i think mark's playing with a lightsaber um is that a special um is is that from the dungeons of the tower is that was that used on <laughs> was that used to extract information from traitors I found these in a bin in Altley at twenty-five pounds. <coughs> yeah, they're portable. Oh, the lights! You can you can hang them. Yeah. Uh, you can. They've got magnets on the end, so you can fix them together. So you can have a column or a bar. They they um, recharge. They've got three hours, and they're pretty powerful. Okay. I need. And some they them. they I move like around. Them. Yeah. Pretty good, aren't they? Yeah. Um, yeah, when you're filming, light, light's always your friend, you, you know. Um, if you can, sometimes you get very dark, grainy shots from people. There you go. Yeah, I've got one of those too, Lola. Just just in front of me, just just kind of down on. Look, I can you can see, you can see I can turn that off. I can turn that on. I can turn that up. Sorry, it sorry, what's, sorry, what's that, Lola? It's a little LED ring light. Just there you go. You can see. Oh wow. Um, illuminates you just illuminates your face again not especially expensive and gives you a nice light i've got these yeah i've got one i've got some of those 
And I've got, hang on. It's worth like 15 quid. I'm using them for the. Yeah, just to get rid of shadows like shins and stuff like that. And I've also got, like, there you go. I've got Matty's entire lighting rig in here at the moment. So, so I've got, like, the full kind of. Okay. I've got this kind of stuff too. But, but I've got this because, you know. I've got mine from Amazon. I've got stuff like that because it's like my job to have stuff like that. Yeah. So you don't need you don't need crazy big stuff like that. But no, you, can get, you can get like LED lights, it's like Lola's got or like from Amazon, yeah. Richard's got there from Amazon, and and it's handy because um, you could just put a bit of extra light on your face to to bring you out from the background. Yeah, to I'm, make you yeah, the I'm feature. Very, I, I'm very aware on video calls now because I tend to work from the north side of the house that yeah. it's getting darker now and it's proving quite. Dims and de sort of sort of dingy as it were. Mm. Yeah. Um, so just a just a, a light, an LED light on your face and stuff like that um, uh, could, could, could make a huge difference, you know. Um, so again, not expensive things. Um, and, and again, it does, you don't have to have a light. Just putting yourself in the right place in a room, so that the window's not behind you and and thing, things like that. Go to the brightest part of the room. Go. Um, you know, so so Delphine, there you look quite dark because you've got a light that's behind you. You can see that, um, and then uh, so so obviously you're a lot darker than your background. But if you're making a video, you want to be the focus. So you you want to be you want to be nice nice and bright. So so again, it's to do with where you shoot it, and and where you know if you put if you've got if you've got video lights. Like which has got there, or just lamps, just putting a lamp in the right place and stuff like that to try and get your nice, nice quid. flattering light. Sorry, this is sixteen quid. Takes six AA batteries. And yeah, ages. Yeah, that's a link in the in the chat. Yeah, great. Yeah, and it's got a diffuser in it as well. So nice soft light, good light. good for the face. Thanks, Richard. Okay. So again, little bits of kit, little accessories can can make a world of difference. Yeah, could you put the link for the stand on the site as well, Jason? Yeah, the little um, stand that you're talking about with the uh... yeah, I'll, I'll find it. And um, what what I what I did earlier in the chat, you see that massive link? Okay, um, it it takes you to my. Uh, hang on, we've well, got. Let me put. Hang on, I've got, I've got a link here. Okay, so because I do a lot of these. Uh, because I've got quite a few followers on YouTube, Amazon gave me a storefront. They said you, um, so I can try and flog Amazon stuff, basically. And, uh, so what they what they do is, I can put recommendations on there, and people can go and visit my shop and say. So I put all the microphones, for example, on this store. Oh, there, there it is in the chat. Okay, um, and you can see I've got. Um, so there's a category on that link called filming with a smartphone. Okay, and that's got the links to this, for example. And there's a bunch of links to the kind of lights that Richard's got and stuff like that. And there's links to all the microphones. So it's on that page. And the nice thing is, if you buy it through that page, I get a little cut, but it doesn't cost you anything ex extra. So so they, they give me a little percentage uh, yeah, that's like tiny but uh, yeah so if anyone buys something from my page it's the same price on amazon but they they, they give me a little, little little divvy so there you go so everyone's a winner all right so so yeah so I, i've put all so all this sort of stuff we've been talking about you, you should should find on there uh, th these are I just i just had a look the, this is on there the lights which is talking about they're on there um all, all that, all, everything's everything's pretty well. All the microphones we've been talking about, they're on there. Um, so, so there's just a link in the chat there. So that should have everything you need. All right. Um, well, any, anything else? We've been at it for two hours. Would you believe it's flown by? But any other questions? Oh, that's been fab, Jason. Really appreciate it. Thank you. No, I, I just thought it'd be a really good good thing to do because. Um, I, you know, it's been brilliant seeing everybody um, do more and more videos 
for open mic and just how good they've been getting. Uh, and, and obviously, um, I, I kind of got a few questions, you know, along the way, people have been asking me questions about stuff and I've helped with stuff. So I, I just thought um, it, it'd be good to sort of have a little meeting where we can all talk together and about some of the issues that, that I've noticed along the way and just just how to uh, how to how to build on that, as it were. So. So, yeah, looking forward to to Christmas coming. Thank you so much, Jason. Sorry? Thank you so much. It's been brilliant. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome, Simon. Anytime. No, no, it's been really, it's been nice to see you all too. Thank you. So, yeah, so I can't wait to see what you've all got planned for uh, the festive period. Oh, Hobson's here. Hello. <laughs> Hobson. Hobnob. Look who's here. Oh, yay. Oh, Hobson. Oh. <laughs> He's a good boy. <laughs> 